Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Nax Active. We've all heard the sayings, look good, feel good, and work hard, play hard. Well, Nax Active doesn't just say it, they live by it. And here's the thing, activewear has to do more than just look amazing. It has to perform amazing. And when it does, it can help you look, feel, and perform your best too. That's what Next Active is all about. Located right in the heart of Los Angeles, Next Active is high performance activewear that delivers. And that's not all. The company is overseen by an amazing all women team, too. And here's the best part. Right now, when you shop nextactive.com, we can save you 20% of your purchase by using promo code REALITY20NUX. That's REALITY20NUX. Guys, I'm loving the one by one long sleeve set, but there are so many amazing collections to choose from in super cool colors and cuts. Everything you need to go from the gym to brunch. Hello, bottomless Bloody Marys. <laughs> so again, save 20% of your purchase right now at naxactive.com with promo code REALITY20NUX. That's REALITY20NUX at checkout. Thank you for sponsoring this podcast and make positive moves with Nax Active. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the show everyone's talking about. It's the last resort edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. It's the one only Teresa right there. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? <laughs> this is everyone's <laughs> new favorite show. Woo. I mean, it's my new favorite show for sure. It is fantastic. Chefs? Kiss. Oh, yeah. I hope it, it stays this strong. I mean, what a premiere. Look at these Look at these couples. There is there is no way they will pump the brakes no and they're gonna, enjoy each other. There's no way they're going to figure anything out. No. Two weeks, not a chance. I'm trying to figure out, like, is Small Ed trying to win the biggest Moron trophy or, like, what's going on there? Yeah, no, you said it best. You said, oh, I think Small Ed is trying to get everyone to hate him. Yeah. I think you're right. I think he still thinks it's cool to be the villain. I don't I think he thinks it's cool to be a jackass, cool to make fun of people, cool to start shit. He hasn't realized it's not yet. And that's why when yeah. we call him small ed, we're not saying stature wise. We're not saying stand against the wall and let me mark off how tall you are. <laughs> Shout out to my dad when I was growing up. I did that too. We all did. Um you mean my dad didn't come up with that? <laughs> um, we're talking about him as a person. He's a small person. He is a small. He's a tiny person. A tiny and, person. And he's also small. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I'm just bummed because I, mean, I was really I, I was gonna use that joke in the appropriate time and place, and then you just all right. Well, I mean, what are you gonna do? Angela confirmed that uh, I do trust Angela on this one. Teresa, tiny Ed. We have small Ed <laughs> and we have tiny Ed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, he's a jackass. And of course, that's that's who he is. And that's, I think, how he wants to be portrayed. I don't think he deserves the label jackass because I think jackass is also a donkey. I do sure. like donkeys. Right. So let's just call him a, a moron. What a moron. What a moron. What an absolute moron. Total moron. And yeah, he was he was full. He was full Ed. <laughs> this episode. <laughs> yeah, and that's why John and I don't go to public jacuzzis. Oh. That's why we don't. We'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We're skipping ahead as we always we do. We did go well, we'll in our minds it was private. In theory, very public. Here's the question. How often do they clean these jacuzzis? That's uh, always the question. Not enough. Yes. Not enough. All right. We'll, we'll get, get there. We'll get into all that and more. Before we do, a little business real quick. If you don't know, we're on Patreon, we're on Supercast, and we're over there covering 90 Day the Other Way. It's quite the spectacle. 
All right. It's quite the series, quite the season. And if you want to hear our thoughts on it, well, jump over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Married to Reality or on Supercast at Married to Reality dot Supercast dot com. All right. So check it out if you want that other way coverage. Also, follow us along on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. We're having a good time over there. We do memes once in a while. We share some news once in a while. But most importantly, we can talk with you guys on Instagram. Yes. I talk to you. John shares all the news. We share news all the time. Updates. Well, up, updates. On our schedule. Just say, hey, the episode's live. If you haven't listened, yeah. check it out. Those so, are news. What are you talking about? Those news. are news in our world. Breaking news. Breaking news. If you guys haven't realized, the episodes drop the same time <laughs> every week, but I like to give some people a reminder. I like too. Some people are not subscribed to the podcast and they might not know when the episodes drop, which leads me into my next point. Make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. Make sure you're subscribed so as soon as we drop an episode on the free feed, you'll get it right to your device. You won't have to go to Instagram to see, oh, is the episode live yet? You'll know. You'll be the first to know. It's so easy to do. Just look down, smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's this hot. It's the scuffles exercise. Huh. There's nothing else. <laughs> Everything else was like. You can't say the hot just tub. Dra- yeah, just dramatic. You can't say the hot tub. You can't say Oswalu's tongue. We can say Yara's uh, taking birth control. You can't say the birth control. You could say. Mm, I'm giving him all these highlights. Yeah, I don't want to spoil. I don't want to You stick around. You listen to the, the full recap. Smash like it's as hot as that challenge. Yes, because we went with Florida weather. We went with the resort. Yeah. So. Stay tuned for the rest of the season if you want to hear some real smashes, I'm sure. I mean, I, they better give a, me some. They better give me some. I'll come up with some. This is just warming up. Uh, how many times can we say as hot as Michael's iPad? I mean, enough is enough with that thing. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so hope you got a screen protector on that. Smash like it's as hot as that challenge. And last but not least, if you haven't let the review, please do. You guys know we're suckers for a little love if you leave a five-star review and you write something. Because we love when you write something. If you leave a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it on the Monday podcast, which is yes. right now it's the B90 podcast. Correct. Also quite the season. Ooh, all everything we cover is quite the season. And I'm day. loving it. 90 days firing on all cylinders. They truly are <laughs> delivering. And I keep saying all the time, and this is not me promoting TLC, but someone, someone's doing something good. <laughs> I mean, this entire, I mean, we totally this entire TLC. podcast <laughs> is us promoting TLC. Well, we are commenting on what TLC does, yeah. but kudos to whoever makes decisions of these freaking couples and shows because it's been beautiful. Also, you probably should see a therapist. Me? No, whoever's coming oh. up with these shows. I mean, they should see like a like a genius therapist <laughs> for being so genius. Something like, like that. Like a Nobel Prize for drama. Well, they do have awards <laughs> for TV shows. They're called Emmys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think 90 Days belongs to the Emmys I think they, category. Uh, well, I think, think there's so? reality television Emmys, but what do I know? Well, there is like, oh, is there like an Emmys for reality TV? Yeah. Wasn't like Darcy and Stacey nominated? Or I don't something? think they. No, 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 no. I don't think they are Emmy worthy. <laughs> but, but I mean, loving the twins. You know, love, we love the twins. We'll be here when you guys are ready. Come on back. <laughs> All right. That is the business. What do you say we do it? The reason we're here 90 Day, The Last Resort, Season 1, Episode 2. It's a shorter episode than last week, but it's okay. It was still packed full of drama. Packed. Full of drama. Full of drama. And the opening scene is basically we pick up where we left off and we have small Ed and Liz making out on the Adirondack chairs. <sighs> you love talking about the Adirondack chairs. You finally figured out how to say the word and now you have to address everything that happens on the Adirondack chairs because I was going to skip right over that. I did practice <laughs> pronouncing I, I Adirondack you. chair. I heard you in the bathroom looking in the mirror. You're like, Adirondack. Ad. <laughs> Adirondack. Well, I wanted to get Adirondack chairs for our patio, but John says our patio is too small for Adirondack chairs. Yeah, you, you can't be cramped in an Adirondack. You want to be able to spread out. I know, but I love, love, love Adirondack well, chairs. Well, maybe one day. One day we'll get the Adirondack chairs so we can make out. All right. Anyone have the Adirondack <laughs> counter going? <laughs> I think that's seven. <laughs> All right. Yes. Group therapy. It's come to an end. And, and some couples are feeling good. Shout yeah. out to Small Ed. Small Ed is like, we're the number one couple. 
Mm-hmm. Are you? Mm-hmm. Are you really? That's something. We'll, we'll see. Are. Well, we're not. You're number one. It's something for sure. So some couples are feeling good. Some not so good. Uh, Angela, she's back in her room FaceTiming Michael. And the only reason I bring this up, because not too much happened, is because we discover from this scene, there's hidden cameras in the rooms. There's those oh. bird's eye nest cameras filming this. You're right, because not to skip ahead ahead, but we saw the previews from next episode where there's going to be some drama between Jovi and Yara. And it's the yeah. same, same thing. It's fantastic. It's some of my favorite footage on maths. It's all of my favorite footage on Five Guys a Week, or what was that show? Oh, I don't know. Remember that show? There was one no, show. Really. Guys, sorry, we're going to digress. It's Oh, it's I do. I do. Probably my favorite show right after The Last Resort. I think it's called Five Guys, Burgers yeah. and Fries, or Five Guys. I didn't guys. love it that much, to be honest. It came on one night after maths, and I was like, what is this? And it's a woman dating five guys she invites them over to her house or her parents house to sleep in the basement but the reason i bring it up there's no cameramen there's no producers the house is just outfitted with hidden cameras and then some just like robotic cameras that basically just move they fought their motion sensor and they just follow every character mm. and it makes for the best television because people are going to be themselves when there's no adult in the room true so here we have hidden cameras and I, i'm just I'm primed for some wild, dirty content. I think that was also Love is Blind, too. There are cameras everywhere. They're Ooh, always hooked to their mic. Right. And I think I was reading an article that they need to stay mic'd not, the whole day. Not once they get out of the pod, though. Once they get out of the pod, there's camera crews following them. Are there? Yeah, so you think there's hidden cameras in a park? No, 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 no. But they have that big lounge where everyone hangs out. That's you don't in think- the pod. You don't think there are hidden cameras? That's in the pod. You think there's still cameras no, no, no. following them? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just mean up until they leave the pod as a couple, oh, yeah. there's hidden cameras. Once they leave, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, and they go into the apartment settings, and there's no hidden cameras yeah. there. Different show. Anyways, back to this show. It's too much to talk about this show. We should not be digressing. But okay, let's get to the real, the real juicy couple. Yes. The Kalani and Asuelo. Okay, so. They're chatting in their room. We kind of picked up where we left off where Azuelo asked, so do you have feelings for this guy? And this is where he was cut off last time. Dun, dun, dun. Came back. And yes, Kalani does. Because she says, I don't just bang guys, right? I, 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 I wanted to see. She's banged the guy. And now she's banged guys. Yeah, she's like, I wanted to see what it feels like. And the more we start talking, well, here I am. I don't just go out and have sex. I did form a connection with this person. And Asuel was like, it is so painful. I am so <laughs> upset. It's like, dude, you started it. You got a BJ. And then you let told like her she can go out and do something. Like, it's entirely your fault. Plus, you have a horrible mustache. So I'm not even surprised. <laughs> Teresa's out. Can I just say, <laughs> between the mustache and the Hawaiian <laughs> shirt and Asuelo kind of just standing there emotionless, he's giving bellhop. He's giving off strong bellhop vibes. I don't know what it is. The guy who carries your suitcase to the hotel room. Oh. He looks like he's working there. He does. I have to say one thing. I dislike Hawaiian Hawaiian shirts so much on men, unless it's a Hawaiian party and it's themed. For some reason, it goes with as well. Well, it's his whole vibe. I think that's I what he normally wears. So yeah. it doesn't seem out of the ordinary. Like I don't. When I see it on him, it doesn't even. I don't even think about it. When I see it on. For example, uh, Gino, yeah. I'm like, what is he wearing? <laughs> yeah. But with Azuelu, it just makes sense. Honestly, anything Gino wears, I think I would think, what is he wearing? <laughs> right? Oh, yes. Name an outfit that he could pull off. Different show, it's John. Different here's, show. But here's why. It's the hat. It is the death. Nothing it, goes. It's stupid hat. Nothing goes with the hat. I know. Anyways, Kalani yeah. and Azuelu. So, Yes, she admits, I still have feelings for the hall pass guy. I ended up liking him. Asuelu's upset. And Asuelu wants, rightfully so, for Kalani to stop texting this guy. And let's start fresh. Yes. And he keeps apologizing and asks her, like, what do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. And Kalani says, you know, prove it to me. Prove it that you changed. Yes. Like, prove it with your actions and just tell me things as you always Show, don't tell. 
Yes. Here's. <laughs> Isn't there like a speakeasy in New York? Please don't tell. Please don't tell. I yes. knew we went to a place yes. like this. PDT, um, which is different than PDA, which is what Small Ed and Liz were doing. <laughs> nice, okay. nice connection. Thank you. So, all right, then we then we get to hear Kalani and Asuelu debate the difference between oral sex and sex sex, <laughs> penetrative <laughs> sex, and there is a difference, right? Kalani's like, there's no difference. There is a difference. There's literally first base, second base, third base, home. True. One of them is home. One of them you could not win the game if you got to. Yes, but there is no difference in a way that all these bases are cheating. I yes. don't I don't care if you get a BJ or you bang someone. Honestly, for me, I would look at it the same way. Like I, I wouldn't be like, oh, so you didn't have sex with you. She just licked your penis. So we good. If it's cheating, it's cheating. If it's a hall pass, there there's a disclaimer to that. There is small print on that hall pass, which is, I had oral, so you can have oral. It's a tit for tat, right? It is, but at the same time, like think about it's it. It's not a tit for tit, and then a dick, and then you continue. Well, you think about it. This whole hall pass thing is a horrible idea. Horrible. And the, here, here's why, right? You cheated, right? You cheated, you fucked up, and I'm upset. I'm so mad at you, but we have kids. So I'm like, ugh, okay, what am I supposed to do? Let me think. So you go and you say, hey, go and have a, do, do the same thing. Me being so upset, I would want to win this. I would be like, Ooh. oh, am I going to do the same thing? I'm going to do worse than you uh -huh. did so you can taste this. Because if you do something worse, then I'll be like, well, I did it first. Okay. Get it? I understand where you're coming from. It's not the mindset that's going to fix a relationship. Oh, it's not, but I don't... It's I what don't you do think, right before you break up with the person. I don't think she wants to fix... I, I know she no. says she does, potentially. I don't think she wants to fix this relationship because he messed up so many times over the years, and I don't see him really improving. The only reason she may want to... Is the kids. That may be the only reason she wants to fix. True. But he would really need to step up his game. Like, yeah. I still see him as the guy who hands over some ice cream samples in Utah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. He's I giving don't know. his cream to everybody. I so, here's, here's one more thing. I think once, and I don't know who this whole past guy is, but let's say he is a little more mature, right? Yeah. Than, than Azuel, which I mean, we saw the photo. We saw the photo. Let's not let's not give any spoilers. Well, I mean, everyone saw the photo. I it's guess making waves on the internet. He, like, Asuelu looks like the Wish.com version of the guy. Yes, he's like Asuelu 2.0. Yeah. But I I hope I would think that he is more mature unless she is a type, right? Let so me like, say this. Let me say this. If he knew, and I would say it's hard not to because they are public figures. If he knew that. She's married. She has kids. And this is a hall pass. And he went and had sex with her. He's not mature. To basically be a home wrecker, to choose to be a home wrecker with full knowledge of the situation, to go forward with that, he's not mature. True. Well, she has a type. Never mind. She, she has a type. <laughs> so Kalani ends up saying, please just leave the room. I want to sleep alone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So... It's New Day Who Dis. Oh, yeah. It's Molly and Angela, two Georgia peaches hitting the pool. <laughs> a couple of Georgia, pe couple of Georgia peaches. They didn't even say that, did they? they did. Angela did. That, she always talks about She's oh. like, She's like, oh, like, we're like, where were you all my life living two hours away? How come we've never done this before? Mm. And I can't believe that they've never met. Yeah. Well, for the sake of anyone in the Southeast, including us, I'm glad they have not until... <laughs> Just now. Yes. Woo. Let me just say, these poor guests. We yeah. watched this woman sitting there trying to enjoy her pina colada. She spent a, a nice, a nice dollar on this getaway, I'm sure. And there she is being subjected to whatever Angela was doing to those pool stairs, like humping, not even dry humping, just very <laughs> wet humping of those pool stairs. I'll tell you this, like. I, if we went there and they were filming this, I would love it un until they would start telling me like, oh no, you cannot go here because it's closed for a shoot. Oh no, you cannot use sure. this pool ride. I would start getting annoyed no matter how much I love 90 because it's 
not the most expensive resort out there, but it's pricey. People save money, people take time off, and then you have freaking Angela there. Unless you gave a oh, discount. Small ad? Unless you gave a discount. Then, Good one. Because you're not getting full access if they're shutting areas down to film, right? A 90% discount. Ooh, I will sign me up. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Yeah, they're they're in the pool. They're, I don't know, again, what they're doing, but they're having fun and they're talking about the therapy session. Molly is still upset with Kelly. She's not even excited to be there. And again, I don't even think she was supposed to be there. I think they were called in as backup. But she says she's not closing doors on him just yet. Well, look at Angela being the one with the words of wisdom. She's like, yeah, just take it day by day, Molly. You got to put in the work. If you want to make this relationship work, you got to put in the work. And I'm like, Angela, who is this? Who well, is wait this for with, it. with common sense? Wait for it. Okay, let's wait for it. Let's get to the couple's challenges. We've been promised challenges. They teased us with challenges. And now we get our first challenge. Let's just do a quick uh, a reminder on the experts. So we have Dr. Petey, okay. who's basically Jenny lookalike. Jenny 2.0. Then we have Dr. Jason, who's Jason. the PhD mental health therapist, the only man. Jason Prendergast, I believe. And then we have Dr. Jamie, who's the relationship trauma expert. She's very needed. Give me the first names again. Petey, Jason. Petey, Jason, and Jamie. Okay. All right. Petey is... Got it. I got him. You know who Petey is? PD is the Jenny lookalike. Yes. Jason is the man. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Jamie is just the Jamie's third the one. Jamie is the other one. This is the third one. Yeah, got it. <laughs> okay. So, couples challenge time. It's an obstacle course. Okay? Small Ed, of course, has to make his little quips and he says, when, when, when we do these obstacles, who's going to carry Michael's monitor? Well, Bum-bum. someone's going to step in and Angela is going to choose... Jovi. And the other looks at the camera. She's like, of course, they both drink. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope that they'll they'll have some challenges that are not physical challenges that Michael can yeah. participate in from the iPad. Because if she needs to pair up with someone every time, this is just dumb. They yeah. should have just had another couple. Like they should just like play Pac-Man or something Michael can also do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, okay, the first challenge. One partner is blindfolded. The other partner guides them using just their voice. So they'll have to be guided through cones. They'll have to assemble something. They'll have to pick up water balloons and break water balloons, right? So it's all about effective communication. Yes. I think you and I could do it if I could write left and right on my arms Mm -hmm. and I was the one navigating you. Because if I was blindfolded... I, I would be say, all over. Don't try to show off, Teresa, because as soon as this challenge appeared on our screens, Teresa said, yeah, we couldn't do this because I don't know my left or my right. But that's the only reason. I think our communication is good, of course. Our communication is fantastic. Of course, you guys get to hear it multiple times a week. All the time. But I don't like this challenge at all because, one, it's a false test of communication. The doctors, the therapists, they want to go, this is a test of communication. We're going to see how they communicate with one another. No, this is a a test of competitiveness because you never told them what you guys were actually testing. So when someone sees, oh, we're breaking off into teams and there's a physical activity in front of us and we're being timed, it becomes a test of competitiveness, not of communication. Anyone who's played any sport is like, you do whatever it takes to win. I disagree. I think they all know why they're there. And communication is important. And if you communicate well, you can win. You don't know. How about you want to talk about communication? The therapist should have communicated no. with, the, with the participants what the competition was all about. No. Maybe it they're was, observing. They're observing. Maybe it was, oh, the, the person with the fastest time gets the first private session with a therapist. And they're like, oh, I want the first private session, so I'm going to be the fastest. No, I, I disagree. I think this is good. Don't we make, finally me, don't have, make me. We finally have experts who are involved. Don't make me say that these experts think, because no. I, I'm not ready to say it yet, but you're going to force me to take a stand. Clear communication, not just communication, clear communication. And clear communication could have started with the experts. They said it's about communication. Okay. They said it. All right. They said it. They okay. said it's about speed and communication. <laughs> okay. All right. 
But it, was just, a it, goes, bit of, a little... it goes hand in hand unless you're small and you cheat. Very true. And that's that's exactly the point, what they're trying to do. Like, show us how you can communicate. And if you can communicate, you win. Very true. Small Ed did cheat as small people do. Yes. And he was caught, fortunately. He was called out for it, fortunately. And he was mad about it. Woo! Well, he first, was mad about it. Let's just run through it very quickly. No pun intended. Small Ed cheated. Angela and Jovi go, nail it. Do, yes. do very well. Yes. Uh, Jovi and Yara, eh, not as well as Jovi and Angela. No. And so. I was just going to say Khan and Asuel. I think Asuel also does know left from right. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he knows many words. <laughs> um, so it, it ends with Jovi and Angela winning. Yes, but I think Molly and Kelly were close. Oh, yeah. Close second. They communicated well. They, they were pretty yeah. good. Um, Jovi in his celebration shouts cheaters never win ed cheaters never win which sets small ed off yeah he's like jason jason he didn't cross the line disqualified him and jason is like drop it ed yeah and kelly's like let it go ed no need to start this and ed goes he called me a cheater you bitch and he starts calling kelly a bitch he's like i'm not gonna let it go bitch Woo! i have to give Kelly some kudos and maybe oh, yeah. it comes from the fact that he is an NYPD officer that he's yeah. like, I'm not going to start any crazy fights because he is not worth it. Because Kelly is the bigger man. Yes. No pun intended. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So. Small Ed is the worst so far and she's going to become even worse. So the results are in and the doctors say, hey guys, this wasn't a test about speed. It was about communication. That's but, what I'm saying. You should have told them after the beginning. No, but still. Angela and Jovi, I was trying to figure out who was with Jovi. Angela and Jovi did 49.75 seconds. <laughs> they were the fastest and they won the best communication. And I think it was Jovi who made the point. Yeah, we communicated the best because we're not a couple, which I think he's probably right First and foremost, you have to communicate clearly. You don't have like a, oh, we have our own lingo. You have to communicate clearly. And second of all, you just treat strangers nicer. I don't think Angela is a stranger, but I think Angela was like, Jovi, straight, right, left, drop the balloon, right, right, move, left. She was like, um, she was like a surgeon. Yeah, very true. So like Jovi was just surgeon. follow. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, Jovi, you're messing up. Like, stop, stop. No. Like, if you were a couple, you're probably going to be a little, oh, no, don't don't go right. to the left. No. Oh, you're messing up. And you're oh, gonna come fill, on. you're going to fill it with fluffer words. Oh, no, yeah. baby, baby, baby. No, no, no. It's like, you're not going to speak oh, like no. that to Angela, to a Angela, stranger. Left, right, left, <laughs> down, balloon, drop it. Plus, please, Jovi was probably run. terrified to lose. <laughs> Who knows what Angela would, would do to him. He's definitely terrified. But yes, they won, and I i don't know. They also went last, right? So they got to see everyone go first, and Jovi also got to partake. In, so it's not a fair fight. Yeah, but I, I'll, I'll give it to them. Okay, so they won, and what are you going to do? I think what we're going to do is take a quick break. All right. We will tell you about our sponsors for this episode. And when we get back, whew. Things will just start to oh, heat up. Yeah. All right. We'll be back in a second. Hey, guys. This episode is brought to you by Smart for Life. Between podcasting, traveling, and everyday life, John and I are always on the go, which makes it hard to plan and cook healthy meals every day. But thanks to Smart for Life, we never miss out on great tasting, balanced nutrition. That's absolutely right. Smart for Life is a doctor-designed health and wellness company that specializes in delicious and nutritionally balanced snacks with a focus on weight management and overall well-being. They have so many amazing choices from cookies to kids, but my favorite is their gourmet protein bars. <laughs> Tell them your favorite flavor, Teresa. <laughs> it's s'mores. <laughs> True. Smart for Life does have s'more protein bars. They also have lemon protein bars, cinnamon pecan protein bars, and more. You can even choose a variety box. And they don't just taste great. They are made with high quality ingredients too. So whether we're traveling or recording back-to-back -back podcasts, Smart for Life has become our go-to meal replacement. 
And if you are watching your portions like me, each bar is individually wrapped. Now here's the best part. Right now we can save you 20% on your next order by using promo code MREAL20 at smartforlife.com. That's right. Just use promo code MREAL20, which is M R E A L 2 0 at smartforlife.com for 20% off. <laughs> Thank you to Smart for Life for sponsoring this podcast and Teresa, hand over that smorf. <laughs> Guys, if there's one thing we love more than talking about reality TV, it's a good vacation. Sometimes you just need to escape the drama, am I right? You're not wrong. <laughs> And there's no better place to escape to than Spectrum Resorts, rated a top 10 family beach resort with two amazing full-service beachfront properties. Turquoise Place and the Beach Club Resort and Spa in Gulf Shores Alabama. There she is. <laughs> Guys, we recently got back from Turquoise Place and let me tell you, this was next level vacationing. Shout out to that complimentary breakfast, our beautiful balcony overlooking the white sand beaches and that gorgeous water. Plus, the on-site dining, shopping, spa services, resort-style pools and more. Can we please go back? <laughs> I'm counting down the days, <laughs> Teresa. And if you guys want an amazing getaway, right now we can save you $200 off your next reservation by using promo code POD1. That's right. Just make sure you book directly through Spectrum Resorts and use promo code POD1 to save $200. As always, I'll have John put links in the show notes. Thank you to Spectrum Resorts for this incredible getaway and for sponsoring this podcast. Nastravi! This episode is brought to you by Drizzly. Want to know what's even easier than throwing a drink? Should I ask Benny's sister? Or maybe Kimbali knows. <laughs> I'll tell you. Getting a drink delivered right to your doorstep with Drizzly, your go-to app for alcohol delivery. Of course. Drizzly lets you shop local stores, compare prices, and have your favorites delivered right to your door. Drama free. Exactly. No cake throwing, no name calling, just a smooth and tailored shopping experience. Drama's fun to watch, but we prefer a hassle-free experience when it comes to getting our drinks. Absolutely. Why leave the couch when the drinks can come to you? I agree. Just download <laughs> the Drizzly app or visit drizzly.com today. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y. Dot com today. So, thank you, Drizzly, for sponsoring our podcast. And I'll have John put a link in our show notes. You must be 21 plus and availability varies by location. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Whew. Hello, Teresa. Are you ready to talk about what we just did? What they just did <laughs> with the experts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I needed that. I needed that break. I needed to collect myself. It was a lot. I got heated. But I'm calm. I'm in a better place now. Yeah, and I love it. So they all sit down in the Adirondack chairs. No. Eight. Wait, did they? No, they didn't sit in the Adirondack uh -oh. chairs. Seven. <laughs> they sat down. Okay, they all sat down. And the therapists say, hey, this was a good test of physical trust. From here, we need to move on to emotional trust. But all right, we're starting with physical trust. And they go around kind of one by one, and they want to know about everyone's experience, starting with Molly and Kelly. And I was going to say, I think this was a great experience for Molly and Kelly because totally. Molly says that for her, seeing Kelly leading, that was all she needs from him. She needs him mm -hmm. to step up and lead, communicate and lead. And one of the experts is Dr. Jamie. She's like... Exactly, Molly. That's what you want from the relationship. And she's like, yeah. And even Kelly was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was Okay, we're, we're getting somewhere. Bit of a breakthrough moment for them. And everyone started chanting, hug, hug, hug. And they do, they hug it out. Yeah. They hug it out. It was nice. Liz. See? Great exercise. All right. Liz said she felt like there was no communication. And Smala goes, yeah, I, I realize I don't trust Liz. So, first of all, Liz was the first one who called Adam cheating. It wasn't just Jovi. It was Liz who said, hey, I think he's cheating. He can see. I'm not even saying anything. And he's just going and following, dropping the balloons. You know and what? What? You're right. She is probably paranoid of his actual cheating in the relationship. Ooh. And so she's quick to notice and quick to call it out when he does cheat. Who does he cheat with? Like, he's such a moron. Oh, come on. 
Come I think on. he has fans. Anyone who has any sort of public persona or fame can get can get a little action. I guess, but small if ads. I sw- if Asuelu is getting BJ's thrown at him left and right, <laughs> okay. small ad might, might get a drunk make out at a, an appearance he's making at the local karaoke bar. Okay, I'll, I'll give you this one. All right. All right. Anyway, sorry, I think I interrupted you, but yes, Liz was the first to call. Yeah, she was the first to call him cheating, and Ed comes out, and as you said, he's like, yeah, I don't trust Liz, so I didn't even listen. I just went. I, I have focus, and I have a goal, and I also cheated. And I'm like, dude, you started a fight. You called other people bitch because you said they called you a cheater, You and now you're saying you did cheat? And Liz is like, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you like, that you that you were able to admit it. It's like, oh, stop, 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 stop giving credit where credit is not no. due. No, that was so like cheating in an exercise about communication is just dumb. Completely, like, it's just it's just you're cheating on yourself. Like you are cheating yourself. The experience, like. What's wrong with you? Yeah. I mean, a lot, but what's a, wrong with you? A lot. And yeah, Liz is so quick to forgive, which is clearly why they're still together because she's so quick to forgive. Yeah. She's like, this is progress. I'm proud of you. You're admitting you're cheating. It's like, no, stop. I mean, yes and no. Like, If you think about it, if someone is going through a therapy, right, they have relationship issues, I think any tiny win is a win. And like for her, it's almost like he was, he admitted he cheated. Maybe she connects it to something else. Maybe mm. he did cheat and didn't admit it, but she knew about it. Maybe yeah. for her, this is like, okay, he can admit to this. Let's see where we're going. So let's not just this. Okay. This charge this. Is this discount? Discount this. Thank you. That's All why right. I have you here, guys. Right. John, the English corrector. That's why. Because it. Again, it was a good challenge, and she <laughs> let's give her this moment of happiness. All right. Ed admitted he cheated. I'm sure they're few and far between. Okay, yes. Yara says, well, I, I do trust Jovi, but I feel like if the positions were switched, he wouldn't trust me. Yes. And then she's like, oh, I've been keeping it this secret for so long, but today... It's about communication, so I'm ready. I'm ready to get it out. Yeah, because the therapist said, okay, you don't think he trusts you. Well, give me examples. Give me an example in your relationship where you think there's a lack of trust. Oh, yeah. And Yara's like, all right, well, there is something I have to come clean about. There is something I need to tell Jovi. Yeah, and let's not forget that here is the issue. Jovi wants to have a second kid. Yara is not ready just yet, right? Yes. And so the big secret, drum roll. She starts crying. It gets very dramatic. It goes into commercial break. It was such a (laughs) pregnant pause, Teresa. A pregnant pause to announce that there will be no pregnancy. For now, because she is secretly taking birth control. I was like half right in my guess. I, were you? Wait. I said tubes died. Oh, you did, yeah. I said tubes died, which is like, well, we I know that's a, It would, well, snip, I snap, snip, snap. You know how, you know the emotional toll three vasectomies <laughs> takes on a guy? Yeah, I don't think you can just, get, I mean, maybe, if you can tie, I know you can nothing untie. about tying your tubes. Yeah. I, I don't think it's, I don't no, I think, think you, you like have burn, a. I think you burn them together. Yeah, I don't think you have a. Not a doctor, I don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't even want to get into this discussion because we don't know anything about it. Yeah, but. She is taking birth control. Yes. And she's been hiding it. And Jovi's like, well, why would you hide this? We should discuss that. And call in if you want. Here's what I'm going to say. Kalani shouted out, she should do whatever she wants with her body. Yeah, she should. But you're in a marriage. You should also talk about things with your husband. I know you and your husband don't talk, Kalani, but couples who are in a healthy relationship, Talk about those things. Yeah, especially about something like this. And Yara's excuse is that, well, I would, I didn't trust Joby that he wouldn't just impregnate me, which is horrible. That's the bigger problem. That's the problem. Okay, that's the bigger problem than communication or lack of communication or hiding birth control. The fact that you don't trust your husband, that you think your husband would impregnate you, 
if you don't want to be impregnated is all sorts of wrong. Yes. But Joey says, well, that's not true. Like I, he's like, I'm not that crazy. I keep talking about wanting to have kids, but I wouldn't just do it if you didn't want to. No, no. That's real shitty to put on someone too. Yeah. Like that's a serious accusation. That's a really bad accusation. I almost feel like if she truly felt this way, could you really be with this guy? No. I feel like that's like, that would be such a breach of trust. Yeah. I think she said it to bolster her argument of why she was taking. Yeah. But I think she's just like, yeah, I'm going to take them. I, the- I take my vitamin every day. I take my fish oil. And I take my birth control. We love our fish oil. You got to take your fish oil. Heart health is important. But I think she was like, yeah, this is just part of my daily regimen. And I don't need to tell him. But in the context of what those pills actually do, yeah, you should have a conversation. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And we have Kalani and Asuelo. Yes. And Kalani says this challenge was an example of how we always act in our relationship, which is poor communication. Very poor. And it, it doesn't stay on them for too long before Angela jumps in. And... I want to say she makes it about her, but it was actually like an interesting realization. Yes. She said, I don't think I understood how much Kalani and Asuelo as a couple are helping me. She brings up, Michael cheated virtually on me and physically. And the BJ. I, mean, the I BJ. think she just forgot about the BJ. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, and I have no compassion for Michael, but Asuelo cheated and I, I feel compassion for him, so maybe I should have some compassion for Michael. Well, it's different because, well, we don't know if Angela banged someone, but let's say she she didn't, right? It's different with Kalani and Asuelo and Michael and her. Like, Asuelo fucked up, gave her a hall pass, so she did whatever she wanted, as she was supposed to with this stupid hall pass, right? Michael cheated, and now Angela is trying to deal with the consequences. Yeah, but I could say... From the outside looking in, I could say Angela has virtually cheated on Michael, too. With that Canadian guy, she was like, oh, I love you, and I'm going to come visit you. Like, there was, it was flirtatious at I the would, very least. I'll give you that until I learned that he has a kidney disease. Okay, which he, is sad, yeah. and, I, and I appreciate Angela making making it known or starting a fundraiser that's all well and good but if you're still flirting with someone it doesn't matter if they're battling a disease or unwell if you're flirting you're flirting true i think she and not to not to take her side necessarily i don't really take anyone's side but i think michael always had this talking to girls, not talking to girls. And that's why she's so obsessed with his Instagram and stuff, right? Yeah. He's not supposed to hang out with the goofballs. He hangs out with the goofballs. <laughs> so in a way, I think Angela does other things to kind of compensate for the things she doesn't know. Does it make sense? I'm I not saying so. it's right, but I I'm saying so. she's like, well. It's not right. I don't even know what he does in Nigeria, but I don't trust him. So let me make myself feel good. In case something comes up. Yeah. No, I think you might be right. It's probably a defense mechanism of sorts. But they do end up apologizing to each other. Yes. So that was good. She says, I'm sorry first. And he does too. Can we just have a moment? Let's Let's just take a moment for the $30 Amazon karaoke speaker with party lights that Michael's iPad is attached to. I oh, love really? you didn't notice the speaker that his iPad is attached to because clearly the volume is not going to be loud enough if you just turn it up on the iPad. So it's hooked up to like this mm. portable speaker, but it's the speaker that has like the blue neon light oh. in the set. And I just, in my mind, I want like every time Michael says a burn that like the lights flash and chant <laughs> like, yes, I got the BJ, <laughs> like the lights are flashing and, and cycling. I didn't, to, I didn't see that. It's just a hysterical speaker to have for such a serious setting. <laughs> it's group therapy, and there's just this party speaker attached to an Don't iPad. Don't we have a party speaker? We do. That's how I know it's a $30 Amazon karaoke speaker. You can change the lights. It Where can flash. Is ours? We might have tossed it when we moved. Oh. I know. It's not a great speaker. We have a party light I gave you. We do have we the party. We never used it. We have the party light. Anyways, then... 
We get back to Asuelo and Kalani, and Asuelo brings up how Kalani is still talking to Mr. Hallpass. Yes, and so the experts suggest, Kalani, would you be willing to not talk to him while we're on this retreat? So can you take a break for two weeks? Mm -hmm. And Kalani looks at Asuelo, she's like, here is my offer. I am willing to block him for two weeks. <laughs> but that makes Asuelo happy. And I think it's it's a good idea for her to do it. Otherwise, why are you there? Of course. Here's the better idea for television, though. Kalani, would you be willing to call Mr. Hall Pass right now and tell him Ooh. you'll be blocking him for two weeks? <laughs> Don't tell him we're all here. Don't tell him it's on camera. But let's just listen to how you guys interact. Ooh, that would yeah, have been better television. I would love that. You know? Right? Well, so that was a therapy sash. It ended, and let's it's time for some fun. Let's cut to the scene that's going to make all of us need therapy. Oh, yeah. It's the jacuzzi. It's the tiny jacuzzi scene. <laughs> and let me just say this. Hold me closer, tiny hot tub. My parents have a jacuzzi that John and I gave them for their birthdays because they're six days apart, so it's easy, right? Uh -huh. And they're so about six, inch, six inches apart in that jacuzzi. No, that jacuzzi is way bigger than what we saw. It's bigger than what we saw. My parents love to jacuzzi, and they wanted to jacuzzi with me and John. <laughs> John said he's not jacuzzi with my parents because so it's going to be no be, for me, dog. He would be <laughs> touching their feet. Yeah. And I was like, no, there's a lot of space. I, I jacuzzi with my parents. I wasn't touching everyone's feet. Mm. Well, after this scene, mm. they definitely were touching feet. Yeah. And... Other things. You don't want to be touching toes in a jacuzzi if you're not in there with your significant other. If you're in there with your better half's parents, <laughs> you don't want to be like, whose feet? Whose feet is that? <laughs> would be a Carell, good is that you? Carell, is that you? <laughs> it would be a nice like break, like a like a little like a get to know each other game. No, knowing your parents, they're probably like, oh, what's that? Is that a carp? Why is there a carp in this hot tub? <laughs> you can't be good for the carp. <laughs> That's, that's the book I'm going to write. The Carp in the Hot Tub. Forget about the bathtub. There is a book that's called The Carp. Oh. I'm saying The Carp in the Hot Tub. <laughs> such a posh, <laughs> such a posh carp. <laughs> Watch this carp in the hot tub. No, this you can also cook him in it. This was more like a bathtub. This was the size of a bathtub. Yes. And we're, we're kind of bearing the lead, but I think intentionally because neither of us want to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Small Ed feels the need to skinny dip in this thing. Yes. And I, I threw up a little in my mouth. Mm hmm. It wasn't pretty. And OK, it's the two of you. It's Liz. It's it's small Ed. You're having fun, whatever. But then Angelus strolls up and small Ed, completely naked, just stands up to show off tiny Ed. He flashes Angela and Angela is like, yeah, Michael is about three inches bigger. <laughs> and Ed is like, hey, I just wanted to salute you. You know, the water is cold. Dude, it's a jacuzzi. It's a jacuzzi. The water's not cold. The water's hot. And that's as as big as you go. That's jacuzzi. Yeah, exactly. The, the jacuzzi is helping you out. Because if he's saying he's saluting her, I would assume what he's doing with his... Wait, you think he's... He said it. He said, what? I just wanted to what? salute you. Oh, boy. This is how you salute. Uh-huh. You go up. Okay. No? I don't think that would be appropriate. Let's not even say it. I think he's just turned on. All right. I think he is turned on by himself being naked. I'm not even joking. You, I think he's probably right. He's probably turned, looking down at the tattoo he has of himself on his leg, and nothing gets Ed harder mm -hmm. than Ed. I think he turns himself on by him. 100%. <laughs> he's that type of a person. 100%. Okay. So then small Ed is naked, Angela's there, Liz is there, and all of a sudden Molly and Kelly show up. This is when Smollett decides to put his suit on. As soon as one other guy arrives, he's not feeling confident. He put his suit on? I oh, didn't see he it. He was looking over his shoulders back and forth trying to find where his suit was. What? He like, grabbed it, slipped it on, and was like, good to see you, Kelly. Well, once Kelly found out that small I was naked, he's like, this is just gross. Like, oh. Yeah, it is disgusting. It is disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. Do you think he was drunk, Smollett? Cool. I think he had a, I think he had like a pina colada. That's what this, I don't want to say a bad thing about this show because so far I love every second of it. Every. I minus think, a naked small head. Minus naked small head. But what this show could really benefit from is a little bit more of an infusion of alcohol. 
Everyone's a little too sober. <laughs> for, Wait for it. Everyone's a little too sober for last resort. John. Teresa. Did you watch the previews? I tend not to. Well, you are going to love it. I don't like spoilers. So someone's gonna someone's gonna get a little too drunk. Oh really? Who? Well, who? It's not a. It's not a. Who is a classic Jovi. drunk person? Jovi. No. Oh, Angela. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Angela. Angela is going to be Angela. All right. So, anyways, whole gang's there. I think Small is a little drunk, and he's like, "I just want to tell you, Molly and Kelly, I love you guys. I, I hope it works out." And Liz is like, yeah, you guys are looking good. How how are things between you? And Molly says, well, we're just here right now. Yes. And Small Ed starts talking over Molly. Mm-hmm. And Kelly doesn't like it. He's nicely telling him to let people finish their thoughts and tells him, well, you love to be the center of attention, mm-hmm. but let, let others finish their thoughts. Well, that sets Small Ed off. Yeah. Well, because he, he says, do you not... Kelly says to Smalla, do you not get a lot of attention? Like, why are you this way? Why are you always taking over? And Angela says, well, he flaunts like this because he doesn't know how to show his emotions. I think Angela is the one person that Ed is afraid of. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't think, like, he doesn't like her. Or he, If anyone else said what Angela said, he would lose his shit. But I think with Angela, I think he knows that she would probably punch him if it came down to it. I think he also knows she's right. Yeah. It's, it's hard to argue when someone is that hitting the nail on the head. It's hard to True. be like, no. It's like, you don't. You clearly don't know how to show your emotions. And that's part of the reason why you act this way. Mm-hmm. And and so Kelly goes, today you were calling people bitch. And Ed's like, you know why I called you a bitch? And Kelly's like, okay, that's going to be the last time you say that. Don't call me a bitch again or we're going to have a problem. And Molly's like, yeah, you need to watch out when you call another man a bitch. And then small Ed, he goes, he's looking for trouble. Oh, yeah. He's like, I'm not afraid of anyone. All right. Come <laughs> at me. Come at me. I'll take you down. And Do Ke- Kelly looked like he was like really trying to hold it together. Mm-hmm. He looked like you can see like some people when they're trying so hard to refrain from fighting that they almost get emotional. Like, a lot of people get emotional, so they fight. A lot of people let their emotions out physically. Mm-hmm. He was looking emotional, like because he wasn't going to let it out physically. It was like it was going to have to come out in liquid form if yes. he if he did not let it out physically. And I'm glad he's like, ah, I'm done, and he lo- he leaves, yeah. which was the smart move. At Reminds me of what's the name of that game when you have these little beavers like sticking out of holes and you're supposed to like hit them. Whack a mole. That's all I want to do to Ed. Whack I just want to whack him with something. Whack a hole. Yeah. Whack asshole. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. That's all I want to do to Ed. I just want to whack him so he like goes down. Yeah. He belongs in the kiddie pool. Get out of the hot tub. <laughs> at the kiddie pool. Yeah. I also like, I wouldn't fight anyone. That's not my not my way that's not how i handle myself but i definitely would not fight an ex-cop yeah no plus i don't think he would fight you unless unless ed physically attack attacked him i don't think he would do i don't think he would i think he knows how to control his emotions because he is an ex-cop i'm trying to figure out like we don't know a lot about kelly and i know there were some accusations out there something with him and molly's daughter is I don't see him as a bad guy unless there was some stuff with him. Maybe something was said or maybe he pushed her or something. I hope I don't know. I really don't know the deeds. But yeah, he doesn't seem like a bad guy. But look who you're comparing him to. (laughs) Contrast is everything. That's true. When you stand next to small Ed, most people look pretty good. Yeah, you're right. Well, they're kind of arguing. He's... Kelly's like, yeah, I'm out of here. And Angela just starts yelling at that, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when it ends. Uh-huh. Well, I'm telling you, <sighs> we're going to pick up where we left off next week. Yeah. Because I saw the previews. It looks wild. Is everyone just a raisin? It looks wild. All right. I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. This is my new favorite show. <laughs> uh, woo. Woo.
Well, yeah. Where is it going to go from here? I don't know, but it's it? looking good. The fact that Yara spilled her secret, episode two. Oh, yeah. Kalani and Asuelu spilled theirs, episode one. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that they're not holding on to these secrets. They're letting them out there. It just worries me that like, ooh, is this only going to be eight episodes or something? We'll see. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll G- take it Give too. it to me. But I, I don't even want to think about the end right now because we're just getting started. Yeah. If you think about it, it cannot be more than 14 if they did day by day. <laughs> right? Oh, true. I was like, how did you just do that number? Because <laughs> uh, so, one episode a day. Yeah. I don't think they would break the day into two episodes. I think they could. They could totally break it up like morning to evening and then the next episode could start from that evening and then Well, that's what they over. do. Yeah. But it's still kind of going to a lot and you kind of cover... Each day in an episode. There could be maybe sort of a reunion of like, hey, how's the therapy working? Correct. Correct. So maybe we'll get 16. Fingers crossed. I know, right? All right. That is way in the future. Let's not even think about that right now. We have too much, too much to look forward to. So, all right. That is the episode. That is episode two. If you guys want more wacky and wild content, if you want to hear us talk about the other way, you can do it. It's happening on Patreon, patreon.com slash Married to Reality. It's happening on Supercast, Married to Reality.Supercast.com. So come on over to the Cousins Club or the Family Affair level to get that bonus content. Yes. We're also on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. You can message us there, which is just if we ever ask you to call in or share your thoughts, or even if we don't ask you to share your thoughts, we still want to hear what you guys have to say. Absolutely. And if you have any tips or any by the ways, I'm always looking for help. So message us there on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Also, just make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. So no matter when we drop an episode, no matter what we drop, you'll get it as soon as we do. It's so easy to follow the podcast. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash your like is as hot as this freaking episode. Woo! So much, so Woo! much drama. Woo! So hot. So hot. So Last hot. place I would want to go is a hot tub. That's you could have said. Well, no, because the hot tub was disgusting. I, I was know. That, say, yeah. I, I literally okay, thought all of right, it. All right, believe all right. me, believe me, right. it crossed my mind for like a tiny, tiny <laughs> second. Yeah. And then you almost threw up, and you said, "Not a good idea." Exactly. All right, so you're smashing like as hot as this episode. And last but not least, I said it before, I'll say it again. We are suckers for a little love. If you haven't left a review, please do. The reviews help us. All right, they help us get out there. They help us find new listeners, new friends. We want to grow this family. Yes. We're all family. Let's grow it together. All right. So if you leave a review and you write something, we'll read it on the Monday podcast, which is right now. It's the B90 podcast. Correct. All right. (laughs) I've said it all. (laughs) Teresa, have you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As usual. As usual. Have you said Adirondack enough times? I'll say one more time. We should get Adirondack chairs. All right. You feel good about that? Oh yeah, I can. I can't wait for our friends to message us that we should get other own deck chairs. I think that's an even ten. <laughs> I think you've just hit ten. I think that's your limit. So with that, I've said it all. Teresa, said it all. Said too much. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.